Money aside, if you could choose to do anything for the rest of your life, what would that be? And there's a reason that I'm asking you this question, but let us know. Stop What's up, beautiful people? Shell here over at A Radical Relationship, where we are a community-focused coaching ministry, helping you to go deeper in four key areas, your relationship with God, self, others, and your calling <laughs> through self-examination first. If you could use help through the content community or coaching in either of those areas, feel free to hop into our community via our Facebook group or our newsletter for more of that. This week uh, in the community, we are talking about careers and calling and how to be fulfilled in this area and how to know how to find a career that aligns with your calling. And if you're not quite in a career that aligns with your calling, what are some questions you can be asking yourself to figure out how to better align, just align yourself in this area? And so we're going to get into that a little bit today. Um, I have just been taking a look at some of the former coaching clients that I've worked with and picking out what some of those pain points have been. And this has been one of those recurring areas that can really contribute to a person feeling unfulfilled if they feel like they're kind of waking up, going through the motions, checking all the boxes and doing the things, but it's not really doing anything for them. They don't feel like it's fulfilling. They don't get really um, any gratification from it and um, a lot of times these women have so many other things going on in their lives that they're focusing on so it's like I mean if this takes care of what it needs to take takes what it needs to take care of and it supplies the money whatever whatever cool it can get put on the back burner oftentimes because it feels like it's gonna take too much to try to figure that out given all the other things that you have going on. But, you know, if you are someone who can feel like you're in a more stable environment, for sure, this can be something that really pricks at you and picks at you because um, it's that one thing, right, that it's like, man, you know, all these other things are cool, but if I can just get... Um, some fulfillment in this area, I would really feel like things are aligning in my life. And so um, that's why I want to dive into that and talk about that here with you all today. And so um, I want you all to drop a comment below and let me know if you could choose one thing to do for the rest of your life that will supply the income that you need. So money aside, if you could choose to do anything for the rest of your life, what would that be? And there's a reason that I'm asking you this question, but let us know. Stop, pause the video, take some time to think about that, and then let us know in the comments what that thing would be. Um, we were talking about this a little while back um, on my job as like an um, opening question for one of our team meetings. And people talked about how they would travel professionally. They would be like professional networkers, you know, just incorporating the things that they really enjoy, which is a huge component, right, of, of finding the career that aligns um, and, and trying to be fulfilled in that. But there are a couple other components, too, um, that that really play a huge role and when you start to put all of these different components together and get the answers to these different areas is going to set you up for a recipe for success and so um in true coaching fashion we want to talk about um sort of where you are currently where you want to go and how it is that we can get there so i want to um just spend a little bit of time reflecting on my own journey in this area because as I even think about, you know, a radical relationship and sort of how we've gotten to this point, it really has been like one thing after another over the years that's continuing to point me in the right direction. And so it can be easy to look at the now and feel like there's so much clarity for me around this. But as I look back on the timeline and how everything came to be, I can clearly see how God was setting me up in different seasons of my life and giving me something that I needed in every season, even when I wasn't doing this direct form of ministry to really help me build that. Um, it started out with, um, you know, being that kind of person where people would 
would always come to me for advice and older family members or family friends would tell me that I was wise beyond my years and just kind of always taking on that nature with people of being um, that 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 voice, a voice in their lives, a voice of wisdom, a voice of reason, a voice of clarity and direction. So that was one piece of the component. Um, I also take into account like my educational background being in psychology. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, go laws. And um, that certainly, you know, when I got to college and was considering all the things, there was a time when I was tempted to do the thing that was going to make me the most money. But um, just after prayer, in that season of my life and and talking to um, a couple people on campus around this, I, I decided to go for it and pursue psychology because it just really aligned with sort of my natural bend and who I already was as a person. So that helped. But then there was also a time like when I was going to get my master's degree, that switched up. Like I originally started out planning to go to uh, UVA in Charlottesville to get my master's in um, higher ed administration and was going to like work on a college campus um, in one of their offices because that was something that I had done on college. I had worked in um, a couple of, of campuses on, in, on my college campus at UT. And so I knew that that would be a good fit. And then um, I, I randomly stumbled upon a, a job for Cigna Healthcare in Sales and just explored that option because it piqued my curiosity. It literally just like I worked for career services at the time at UT and I was just on there browsing jobs like let me just see what's out here literally and I ran across it and it sounded interesting and I was and I just wanted to interview to just get my interviewing skills up and get more experience in that area and then I took the interview and then it was kind of like out of nowhere there was this like oh this might actually be a real opportunity and so I continued to follow that through and, and pray about it and took multiple interviews with them and, and asked the questions a huge component of uh, choosing to take that job was that they were going they had a program where they would pay for me to get my master's degree and so I was like well shoot I had gone to college on a full ride so I didn't have any debt from that and now I'm gonna get the opportunity to get my master's masters for free as well it just made sense <laughs> and it felt like the god thing and so i took that job and i i point that out just because like i wasn't really looking for that i already had a plan and so this is where god's divine interventions have to be uh really taken into account and we have to just surrender to like some part of this process may just be a divine intervention it may not be that you're going going to have the exact plan and know exactly where to go and have the right connection this was literally me just bored at work one day perusing through <laughs> a site and to God be the glory. So there's a huge component of this whole process of figuring out the right career and the right calling and being fulfilled in this area that is going to just be divinely orchestrated in some ways. And so um, I took that job, which um, gave me some more time to really do some exploring around um, okay, what is it that I really want to do? And, and given that, what degree should I pursue in light of that? And so I talked to some more mentors and, and people who I admired, people who felt like they had it figured out. I will run by them, you know, like this is kind of where I'm naturally gifted. Here's where I could sort of see myself. And through those mentors, and actually, um, now that I think about it, one of one of the guys who played a really men uh, instrumental role in this, he passed away, uh, I think it was last year, the year before. So, wow. Amen. Thank God uh, for the role that he was able to play in this. But yeah, so through those conversations, I was able to discover that I wanted to uh, move forward with a master's degree in industrial and organizational psychology. And so I did that. Um, continued to work in sales. I didn't leave that career in sales until 2022. Um after my divorce, um, had just really been seeking God, had already become a, a certified life coach because um, the divorce really forced me to just be seeking God about next steps. And he placed that on my heart. And so I moved forward with getting my life coaching certification. So again, that was another thing that like 
this wasn't me thinking about like, what should I do next? Naturally, it was a situation in life that forced me to have to think about it. And I partnered with God around that. And he gave me that next step. And then I moved forward. And I, you know, was still working in sales, getting certified as a life coach. So I didn't exactly know how it was going to come into play, except that I knew that I wanted to do some form of non-traditional ministry full time. So I knew that it played into the overall plan, but I didn't have the exact step of what that was going to look like. And so I just started to feel this burning desire to um, leave my job in sales. Like it was very lucrative. Um, I was very financially stable through that time. I had the opportunity to buy a home, pay off two cars, buy another home before um, Aaron and I got married, have a fat savings, <laughs> fat 401k. Like it set me up for success financially, but I knew that it wasn't the end all be all. Like I had a deep desire to be heavily ingrained in full-time ministry by way of like, you you know, not working for a church, but really doing some more hands on work with people as a form of ministry. And so I started working with a business coach and was already seeking God about um, leaving the job and, and finally felt like he gave me a green light for that. And then I quit the job scared, you know, but, you know, there were some practicals around it that made it make sense for me. And I knew I could go back, you know, if, if worse came to worse, quit the job. And then um, in order to like kind of spiritually prepare myself and, and work through the fear that I was feeling about leaving this really financially lucrative position, I um, started, you know, searching out spiritual resources and through that found a Bible plan in the Bible app that was uh, done by Faith Driven Entrepreneur, which is the nonprofit that I now work for full time as well, in addition to running a radical relationship. And again, divine orchestration that like, okay, you know, there was something in the back of my mind saying like, okay, I could get another job that kind of aligns with where I'm going to produce some income until I can really feel like I'm ready to uh, go all in with the radical relationship. It was in the back of my mind, but it wasn't necessarily the plan. It was just something that I was willing to explore. And then again, <laughs> saw the job description and it was like me in a job description. Prayed about it. The people who were considering hiring me were praying about it as well. And we both felt like, yes, you know, that God's grace is on this. And so I tell people, God bamboozled me into quitting my job. And so all of those things to share that, like, it's been a journey and kind of one step of the way, putting one foot in front of another one the current stage, something will happen that leads to the next stage, right? It's been a combination of what's my natural gifts and talents and natural bins, what's my educational background in, how relevant is that? Um, as I'm talking to mentors, what, what insights am I getting about what I should pursue? Um, and then what is God telling me? <laughs> Hey friend, are you interested in joining the community? If so, you can head over to a radical relationship.com and put the necessary information and hit join the radical community. Once on the website, you can head over to that community tab to stay in the know for what we have going on. You have the opportunity to join our Facebook group. That's where it goes down as well as sign up for a future small group. Each month on the first Tuesday, we have our community Bible study. We're doing some in-person and events here in Memphis. Be sure to sign up for that, as well as community coaching on the third Tuesday of each month, amongst other things. We would love to see you here. You don't want to miss it. Me <laughs> as I seek him about these different things. Um, and so also as I reflect and look back, I can see how God was using each of those different things for his ultimate plan. Even spending that time in corporate America, I didn't know that I was going to I didn't identify myself as like entrepreneurial, but now that I'm in this space and I'm creating something and building something, this ministry for you all, that sales experience is really helping me, you know, in crafting my message and knowing how to tell the stories and knowing how to speak to the problem of people and going in prepared, you know, with my presentation to speak to the pain points and help them understand value. All of those things were what what I learned in my experience in sales and then also cultivating relationships. People like doing business with people that they like. And so coming off as relatable and having those connection points. And so 
all of those things, you know, um, have been used to prepare me. Nothing has been wasted. And I'm grateful to God because that's such a theme in my life um, where I'm seeing that like God wastes nothing. Absolutely. And so um, I want to give you all a couple of scriptures that you can use um, to meditate on, to commune with God over around this. One is Proverbs 16, 9. It says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And then Psalm 32, 8, it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. So let's get into um, a little bit of coaching around this to round us out. Coaching moment. So I asked you earlier um, if you could be doing, if you could choose to do anything in the world and you knew it would financially sustain you, what would it be? Um, and and hopefully you have some time to really think about that. If not, um, you can use that as a quiet time if this is something you're really struggling in to think through that. Now, the answer to that question is really going to expose your desires. It's going to say, man, this is a thing that I long for. This is a thing that I love. This is a thing that like, if I could just be doing this, like I would be happy. I would be set. And it's important, you know, for those desires to be exposed because it, it does speak to um, where God may be leading you. And um, God also wants to partner with you in that, right? And so um, let's talk about how to figure out what you should be doing. First is follow the breadcrumbs. So the way that I've mentioned how, you know, people in my life were already telling me that I was wise beyond my years. And I recognize that people were coming to me for advice a lot. Well, now that I'm coaching, it all makes sense, you know, and even, you know, sometimes coaching people that may feel out of my wheelhouse in different ways because I haven't had that experience. But um, people have spoken into my life to help me see that God had gifted me with um, a, another level of wisdom with that. So what have family and friends pointed out about you? What have they told you that you're already good at? Um, what are some things that you just like up and done that you really feel good about? Think about volunteer experiences, trips that you've been on, um, things that people have told you about that kind of made you perk up like, hmm, that sounds interesting. What are some of those things um, and things that you've experienced that makes you go, man, this is it. I remember having this conversation with a previous coaching client and she talked about how when I asked her this question, her mom went back to a um, volunteer trip that she had done in college um, in Atlanta. And she talked about working with different kids and how her heart had broken for some of those kids, seeing um, the homes that they had come from and how that really touched her heart and really stuck with her. And I think if I remember correctly, she remember like this one specific boy that she really connected with. And so she had this heart for really helping people and to get them out of certain circumstances. She had this bend towards like being a caretaker and being a caregiver, which, which resonated with some of the things that she was already considering for um, a career, but she never really put into perspective how that particular experience had impacted it. And so it was beautiful to see that come to life just through that one simple question that's causing her to reflect. And then I truly believe it was the Holy Spirit that put that on her heart and brought that back to her remembrance, which is a beautiful part of um, Christian coaching. Uh, think about that day, things that make you feel like your day was worth it. Um, and also think about the things that you, you have done that you didn't enjoy as much. So you don't have to keep forcing yourself to try to go back to that because it's noted that like tried that, didn't love that. So answering those questions are going, going to really help you point towards your destiny when you can start to figure out like, what are those things that I've kind of had my hands in or that people have spoken over me? What are those breadcrumbs? Because those are the things that are going to point to your destiny. Then assess your gifts, skills, and talents. What are you naturally good at? What's your educational background in? Um, what, are the, what are the gifts that God has already placed on the inside of you? Um, I remember a different friend of mine, the first time that she, um, I remember the first time that she gave a uh, message at church and, she, you know, it was a sermon. I can't remember what the event was, may have been a women's event, but the way that I saw her come to life when she was up there teaching, I was just like, 
sis is in her lane with this. And that's the other reason that it's important, you know, to be in the right kinds of community because these people are also your eyes and ears, you know, to your blind spots and the things you may not recognize for, for better or for worse. And so after seeing that, I, you know, hit her up like, yo, you were lighting up. You were in your bag. Like you were, I, I could see you as a teacher. Like you embodied that completely, um, which then helped her to in turn be like, yeah, and I really enjoyed that. <laughs> and so plug for, for the right kind of community right there. And so what these questions are going to do when you assess your gifts, skills, and talents, these things are going to point to your level of ability. And that way, if you, you have something that you feel like your destiny is pointing to, but you may need to get more training in it, like you have a natural being, like life coaching, right? Like I had a natural being towards it, but I didn't have any formal training. And so I went to get certified as a life coach. <laughs> And then um, when desire and ability meets destiny, then you've got a recipe for success. And so you spend some time thinking about, you know, if I could be doing anything, what would it be? That's desire. You spend time thinking about, you know, what are my natural gifts um, and talents? That's my ability. You spend time thinking about, you know, what are things that I've already been involved in and that people have been telling me about that I'm really good at that points to your destiny. And then when all of these three things come come together, you get a recipe for success with your calling. And so that's the thing. <laughs> that's the one formula, you know, and, and sprinkling in a lot of that divine intervention on God's behalf um, to continue to allow each step of the way to point to the next and you being able to be surrendered to that. So to close out here, a couple of um, YouTube videos that I've done that may help. One is called Journey to Purpose When God Desires More for You. For those of you watching this on YouTube, I'm going to pop that up <clears throat> here on the screen. And then for those of you listening to this, um, I'll include it in the podcast notes, or you can just go over to the YouTube channel and, and search Journey to Purpose When God Desires More for You. Also, I have a YouTube video on um, working a full-time job and doing entrepreneurship and how to make them both work. Um, I recorded that video when I was still in sales and I, there was this tension of like, I'm stuck in this place, but I know that I want to be over here. How do I balance that and make both work in the meantime? And I'm kind of still experiencing some of that because my greatest heart's desire is to be able to just focus on radical full time. And I anticipate that that's going to happen one day, but I don't know for sure. And so there may be me just like doing both, you know, doing multiple things all of my life. And so if that's how it ends up being, I know that God will work that out as well in me to be able to truly reach a place of surrender with that. What part of this video was helpful for you? I want to know. Um, please drop in the comments and just let me know what was helpful. If there's any resistance that you feel coming up or anything that you feel like may still present themselves as obstacles to accomplishing this um, let me know in the comments would love to hear that and be able to provide any more direction around that if I can um, getting some alone time and quiet time to really be with the Lord journal through these things think through these things and allow him to speak into you as well is going to be crucial as well as doing some exploring you know with other people so hope that helps Look forward to hearing from you all. Until next time, folks, I'm out. Bye, y'all.